What is up guys and welcome back to Lesser Athletes, I'm Chadwell and today like always is an interesting video for you. One free agent for every team but we're doing a two parter for this one. Tomorrow will be the uh, next part and it is the West for today. Um, when I was making this video, I wanted to kind of make it uh, a little bit fun. So I did it where every single team gets uh, a different player. Um, there's some players that um, weren't even used that I think could have been used as stars. Um, but definitely, I will say that this is a fun video. I had fun. Uh, re I did some research on a little bit of every team. I looked at mostly what team needs and... Um, uh, I also just, in my opinion, what I think they would want. Um, but yeah, so you're going to see a little fact and a little thing, a little idea that made it. And why do I think that player uh, should go to that team? So starting out with the West, with the first West team is the Dallas Mavericks. And I chose Brooke Lopez. They need more defense. They need a bigger center. They need someone that could be athletic. But I don't think you need athleticism with Brooke Lopez because Brooke Lopez is such an elite center that... Um, and he's really aged like fine wine. Somebody that has really been playing his better basketball. Um, well, actually, I won't say better basketball. Defensively, his better basketball when he has um, uh, played with the Bucks uh, recently. I almost call him Buccaneers. That's crazy. Bucks recently. Um, Brooke Lopez, almost a defensive player of the year if Darren Jackson Jr. didn't take it away from him. But... Someone I think Dallas would desperately need. Center position is going to be the biggest thing. Uh, defense is the biggest thing. Why not get two and one with a Brooke Lopez? He can also kind of shoot the ball for you. Um, he can also probably get into your uh, scoring for you. Somebody that has a really elevated um, scoring wise this past season. But I really like Brooke Lopez for the Dallas Mavericks. And I think he would fit well with the Luka and Kyrie pairing. Up next, Denver Nuggets, and this is very underwhelming for you. I understand this is very underwhelming for you, but listen to me. As to when I'm recording this video, pre-recorded videos, check the channel uh, community. Uh, what is it called? We're going to be on vacation for a little bit. Um, you guys need more stretch bigs. It's also 3-1 and one to the series, so I'm guessing, I'm calling it now. Denver Nuggets have won the uh, finals, and if they didn't, prove me wrong, Heat, but... I'm going with Dario Saric because they need stretch bigs. Dario Saric played with the Thunder when he uh, gained traded from the Suns. He played pretty decent. He didn't play bad. He played rotational minutes that I think the Nuggets would really like. Someone that uh, you could definitely put out of a uh, forward spot. I want to do center forward spot. Um, could shoot the ball, can pass around, and I think could also drive when he needs to. I think it's a good rotational piece. You're the Denver Nuggets. Running back with the same team. You don't need some free agents. You don't need to make a new trade. That's what we've seen teams trying to do that, and it ruins the chemistry of the team. Don't do that. Don't do anything like that. And just try and get a new championship with the same team because you have six players undeniably that will, uh, I think are untouchable for you. Up next is Golden State Warriors, and they really need someone that's a better shooter and uh, that could replace an Otto Porter Jr. potentially that didn't really play for them. So... I went with Joe Ingles, somebody that I really like and somebody that um, crazy how he will always have that three point shot in his game and he will always be that three point specialist no matter what. Um, remember him uh, being injured, coming back to the Bucks, and still having that amazing three point shot is so fun to watch. Um, why not Golden State Warriors? I think he would fit right in. Somebody that you can easily uh, pass and shoot, catch and shoot player that would fit in with the Warriors. We saw what he did with the Jazz, and he really elevated the Jazz. I'm burping, bro. Elevated the Jazz when he was a catch-and-shoot player for the uh, Jazz. It was him, Bojan, uh, and even Jordan Clarkson was somebody that was uh, playmaking for them. I was trying to think of the six-man uh, competition. I remember when it was like Jordan Clarkson and Bojan for six-man of the year. Or was it Joe Ingles and Jordan Clarkson? It was somebody like that. Anyways... Golden State Warriors, I think, fits in with Joe Ingles being that catch-and-shoot guy, and I think it would really work with the Golden State Warriors finding that replacement for an Otto Porter Jr. Up next, Houston Rockets. And I was originally going to put Dylan Brooks on here, but I like Cam Johnson better, and I think he fits better with your team. Cam Johnson is somebody that is going to probably get some money. I think he stays with the Brooklyn Nets. But in this scenario, no person can come back to their own team. Everyone has to go to a different team. So Cam Johnson is going to be the guy going to the Houston Rockets. Um, point guard is probably the biggest concern for them. But I'm going to guess in the uh, 
let's say in this scenario, um, Amon Thompson or somehow in some way, Scoo Henderson drops to the Rockets, they get their point guard for the future. So now you, your biggest need is a wing. And I think defensively, it will be perfect for you. 3 and D player is what is going to be needed. Um, even Let's say even in the draft, they uh, draft a wing, then they can go point guard and free agency, Fred Van Vliet. Rumors have it Kyrie Irving is now on the board for them. I don't know about that one. That uh, sounds like a smoke screen to me. Um, also, uh, we've heard um, uh, James Harden, of course. But Cam Johnson, I think, fits in perfectly with what uh, the Rockets would want. A great defensive, lengthy player that can shoot the ball defensively is very well. Fit in, probably a four. Put Jabari Smith Jr. at small forward. I really like that, honestly, because I think Jabari Smith Jr. could be a great three in this league, especially with his shooting ability. Um, Sangoon at center, of course, Jalen Green at the two, and then Amon Thompson or Scoo Henderson at the one. I think that's a really good team, and that's a team that is young, don't get me wrong, and probably wouldn't be competing the first year, but would definitely be competing in maybe a, a year or two ahead. Up next, we have the Los Angeles Clippers, and their biggest need, in my opinion, is going to be an upgrade at guard position or some star power, because I think that's, when I say star power, I mean like a veteran star. Clippers, man... Y'all have had it unlucky. Clippers curse. There has been so many times where Clippers look like they're going to be so good. Injuries, something happens, everything goes down. And why not go for a guy like Fred Van Vliet? Someone that can play make for you. Someone that can really facilitate the ball. And when you need him, you can lean on him for scoring. He's somebody that has proved to be a great scorer in this league. Can shoot the three ball pass. He has great dribble moves. Very uh, sneakily. Uh, I think he is very agile. Um very good player and i think you can get him uh chances are right now that russell westbrook comes back on a small deal which i don't blame him to fred van vliet will probably want some money so there's gonna have to be some switching around with the roster um probably won't get mason Plumley back or somebody like that um but fred van vliet right now your guard position is really russ bones highland i'm thinking point guard position when i say especially guard because shooting guard you could probably put norman powell up there terrence mann um, Paul George could even be a, a shooting guard. Wouldn't really do that, though. Um, but your point guards are really Russ and Bones Highland right now. Why not get uh, Fred Van Vliet in there and really uh, up the point guard position? Up next, we have the Los Angeles Lakers. And I, of course, am saying Kyrie Irving for them. But listen, when I first was making this video, Kyrie uh, and all the Maverick stuff didn't come out yet didn't come out and then all the things with Kyrie staying with the Mavericks his plan is to stay with the Mavericks <sighs> ruin this video for me for the Lisa Lakers so I'm kind of cheating here I'm gonna say if you absolutely have to in in the hypothetical world that we're living in right now that no one else is coming back Kyrie should be your main target someone that would work well with LeBron someone that could score the ball when needed someone they could pass the ball to Someone that you can is a great third option for you, or a second option if AD is the third option. Maybe LeBron's not the first option anymore. Whatever it might be, someone that you can also lean on because the Lakers have played very, very well when there's a third star in there, Austin Reeves. But looks like Kyrie's coming back. So I'm going to say, and I'm going to cheat here, Austin Reeves should be your main priority because of how young he is. And you could really, if you had to, I don't know if you would want to, but if you had to trade LeBron or AD, someone like that, you could possibly build a team around Austin Reeves. I know it's a big possibly because Austin Reeves is a player I don't know how well uh, and how amazing he's going to be when it's like his team and not a third option, for example. A lot of players might be very, very good as a third or second option, whatever it might be. And... Um, then they go to their own team and kind of like fall off. You can look at like Chandler Parsons, for example, as someone like this. There's some other teams too. Uh, but Jalen Brunson is the exception for this. The reason why I say this is because when you're the third option, you're getting the third best defender on you. Okay, let's say a team doesn't have great defenders. So they only have one great defender. And of course, it's going to go to the number one option. Well, now you have the third best defender on a bad defensive team. You get my point. But... Still, you can't deny how great Austin Reeves has been for the Lakers. So, 
I think for you, for uh, the Lakers, you have to get back Austin Reeves. I think he fits in well with what LeBron and AD does, where he's at good guard position. And he's starting to learn how to play make. So maybe this is your point guard. Um, I like him more as that shooting guard combo guard, and you get a traditional point guard. If you had to go traditional point guard, and there was someone in free agency, honestly, D'Lo would be nice to get back, but you probably like your chance to get mad. Fran Van Vliet, somehow get Russell Westbrook would be crazy. Um, off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of the point guards that... Uh, I was about to say Mike Conley, but he's not a free agent. Anyways, you get the point. Lakers, get Austin Reeves back. But in this hypothetical world, Kyrie's a better option for you, and I think you go get Kyrie. Up next, Memphis Grizzlies. So, Grizzlies, we do not know what's happening with uh, Ja Wick right now. So, we could see potentially maybe him getting suspended only 30 games, maybe suspended half the season, maybe more, which would be even crazier. Um, but what's something that the Memphis Grizzlies are going to uh, not have is shot creation. They don't really have great shot creators on their team. When you really think about their shot creation, it's really from uh desmond bain and jaw well one of them is gone dylan brooks kind of shot create sometimes but he's not coming back so get you a karis lavert someone that is a great scorer in this league someone that can really score the ball there's not really much uh playmaking or rebounding but he can score the ball for you a really good guard for you get karis lavert someone that i think could definitely uh ease off the pain of jaw leaving a lot where they can maybe rely on tyus jones playmaking that jaw had and maybe the scoring is karis lavert something that they could rely on or desmond bain of course you know but i think it wouldn't be a bad option to get karis lavert in there to really score the ball for you up next minnesota timberwolves and when i was looking at the timberwolves of course wing was a, a big thing but i saw that um a two-way player was something that they really would want so they don't really have that much athleticism on the team they need the forward position like i say you can see on the left um, but, um, wing position, um, athleticism, two-way player, that was screaming Rui Hachimura to me, and that's somebody that started to show off in the playoffs that he could really play, um, it'll be very, in it'll be very interesting to see if he continues that, uh, stretch of how good he was in the playoffs to become, uh, and to play for the, um, uh, whatever team it might be, or to come back to the Lakers. But the Timberwolves, I think you would really like a Rui Hachimers, uh, somebody that you could either play or keep on the bench. Um, and I think he could give valuable minutes for you. I think he could be very explosive for you, something that uh, Ant is like that really works well with your team. He could explode. He's very quick first, first step. Um, and he's learned how to shoot a shot a little better and start scoring a little better. Um, uh, maybe not... Uh, um confidently uh like he might not be as confident as he was when he was going against the nuggets and saying the reason why i'm seven for seven is because they don't got defense in the paint talking about Jokic, shouldn't have said that one um so it'll be very interesting to see uh where the timberwolves uh go and how are they going to upgrade when it comes to um free agency up next new Orleans pelicans New Orleans Pelicans was in the middle of the pack when it came to three-point shots. They were dead middle, and they didn't really have any three-point shooting. Um, so why not get some shooters around your team, someone that can definitely be catch-and-shoot players for you that you can pass and quickly shoot for? Um, Seth Curry screams out uh, one of the best off uh, three-point shooters in this free agency class. Seth Curry, we already know, is a Curry first off, so there's shooting in your blood from Dell. Um, pause. But I think that... Um, Seth Curry could be a really good player for the Pelicans. Somebody that uh, CJ McCollum has been running point CJ for a little bit, and it's been working sometimes. Get uh, get Seth Curry at shooting guard, or maybe you get Herm Jones as shooting guard, and there's really no place for Seth Curry in the starting lineup. Um, we'll have to see. Um, put Seth Curry then on the bench, someone that you can rely on when you absolutely need to, maybe crunch time to shoot a three, and you can switch some players out. Um... But he would definitely be someone that I think the Pelicans should look at at potentially uh, throwing him some good money for uh, to increase their three-point shooting. Up next, I'm going to say Thunder. And I want them to get a more traditional center with Chet. And another player I was really looking at was Nas Reed for them. But the thing about Nas Reed is that he's more offensive and not really that defensive player that I think they'll need. And Pearl's kind of the middle. They have some money. They have some cap space. Why not? You can splurge a little bit if you're trying to compete and try and get a uh, Yaka Pertle, uh to the Oklahoma State Thunder. 
another way they could also do this is maybe wing death, uh, gain some more wings in there, uh, maybe gain another three point shooter like an Isaiah Joe that would really work for them. Um, but Yaka Pertl, somebody that I think could work good as a five and then Chet at the four, could really get the rebounding game. His rebounding game is very good, something that I think the Oklahoma City Thunder really need. Uh, can score too, someone that can also sometimes pass, which is really the Thunder's way of drill pass shoot. Um, Shooting isn't a question mark, though, when it comes to shooting, but he can score, which is something big. Um, but it'll be very interesting to see what the uh, uh, Thunder will do because I think traditional center is going to be a big need for them, but I think they're going to go more wing depth when it comes to the uh, free agency. Up next, Phoenix Suns. And I wanted to go with someone that uh, athletic build that would excel as a third option. Kyle Kuzma with the Lakers did not really do well as a third option. Let me first off say that. Um, but there was at times he saw, we saw some big things. I think Kyle Kuzma has really learned how to play better uh, from uh, leaving the Lakers. And with the Suns, um, having him at like a small forward position, maybe even power forward Kuzma, um, I think he would work. They really need athleticism on their team. They need some players that are going to be dogs for them when it comes to it. And I think Kuzma is a good option. Someone that can... You got the third uh, best defender on Kuzma. He's not going to be... Uh, he's not going to be getting locked up. He's going to be someone that can still score the ball. Someone that's going to be able to help... Uh, if, For example... Sometimes you need to double somebody. You're doubling Booker or KD. Someone's going to be wide open. It could be Kuzma. And Kuzma is going to be somebody that can knock down those shots. Somebody that can easily score the ball. Someone that can uh, be a good third option for a team. I wonder what the Wizards are going to do. Because he is on a player uh, option. It's going to be interesting to see if he, uh, I would assume, declines it. Because um, of how much money he's going to make and how much money he could make. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they would, um, sign him back on a larger deal. Um, but we don't know. The Wizards are really in this point where we're going to see some big moves from them. Up next, Portland Trailblazers. I think the last team's the Jazz. Uh, Portland Trailblazers. More wing depth is something that they really need. And this could be another scoring option. So let's say Jeremy Grant doesn't sign back. Kelly Oubre Jr. could be your big replacement if Jeremy Grant doesn't come back. Your wings right now is Jeremy Grant, uh, Cam Reddish, Matisse Thybul. Um, I'm not counting Shane Sharp as a wing. I'm count uh, You can count him somewhat as a wing, but I count him more as a wing shooting guard. Um, and that's really it. I think Portland Trailblazers need to get winning basketball players and... Is Kelly Oubre Jr. a winning basketball player? Probably not. But is he someone that can definitely score for you when uh, maybe in the second unit and really excel for the second unit? Yeah, he's going to be someone that is going to excel his uh, second unit and to really create um, uh, options for you and create scoring uh, off the bench that and create some bench points for you that's going to be needed for the Trailblazers because if the Trailblazers want to compete with Dame and want to make a run in the playoffs... They're gonna have to be um, a team that um, they're gonna have to be a team that has great depth and s team that uh, can and is willing to uh, take sacrifices. So I think Kelly Oubre Jr. would take a sacrifice not starting going to a backup lineup. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see. That man is staring into my eyes. Okay, Sa Sacramento Kings. Nope. Next one's the Jazz. Sacramento Kings. Fits in the scheme and can replace Trey Lyles. Trey Lyles, uh, there's a chance he doesn't sign back. So let's try and find a replacement. I think P.J. Washington, someone that is a great three-point shooter, very athletic, someone that I think is very underrated in this league. Sacramento Kings, your 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 whole offense is fast-paced offense, shoot the three almost, it feels like. P.J. Washington fits right in there. He's very athletic where he can run fast you can go to fast sets whatever it might be someone that can you can pass to shoot the three bucket whatever he also um someone has been very defensive uh minded someone that's been playing uh better defensively um and i think he would be a good replacement for trey lyles i think he's a big upgrade for trey lyles and i think he's what um 
how Keegan Murray helped him in the playoffs where he was that three-point specialist that they could lean on. P.J. Washington's also that. P.J. Washington's something that uh, they could lean on. Someone but with more athleticism, more scoring than maybe a Keegan Murray. But that, don't get me wrong, Keegan Murray's good, but he's just way better than a Keegan Murray as of right now. Up next, San Antonio Spurs. Playmaking guard to work well with Wemby. You might be shocked seeing D'Lo for Spurs, but I think the number one thing the Spurs, if they're wanting to compete would be sign a good point guard. Um, it'd be very interesting to see uh, what the Spurs do in free agency because there's a chance that nothing happens. They keep the cap space for next season. They let Wemby one year just chill and relax and just try and learn and fill, uh, fill in wherever he wants to be, which I think is a good option. I think that's a very good option. But D'Lo could be someone that maybe you have a two-year deal, three-year deal on, that you just have him, so it's chemistry building. He could be someone that could easily uh, play make to Wemby. He was somebody that was one of the better uh, playmakers in the uh, league. Everyone's going to look at his recent game with recency bias. I get that. But he's still someone that can pass the ball, someone that can uh, score when he needs to. It's D'Angelo Russell. He was the second pick for – was he second pick, second or third? Second pick uh, in the 20 – 16, 2016, 15, Carl Anthony Towns was, I'm trying to think, was it Carl Anthony Towns or was it the year of Joel and Bean? Anyway, you get the point. Dion Joe Russell, I think would fit well with them. Needs a guard that I think could play, make Trey Jones is good, but is he really your um, option? I think he's more of a six man, just like his brother. And D'Lo could be a starting point guard, and I think he still should be a starting point guard in this league. Last but not least, Grant Williams. 3D player that I think the Jazz would really like. Uh, Three-point specialist that can defend next to Kessler slash Lori, uh, like I say on the left. Someone that I think they could lean on when it comes to three points. This is basically what Kelly Olenek did with more defense, in my opinion. Definitely somebody that uh, didn't really get to shine when uh, Joe Mazzula took over as head coach and took got minutes taken away. And I think uh, there's a reason why Ime Udoka and he flashed more when Ime Udoka was there because he was a defensive player that was great at just sh- catch and shoot threes. And that is something that um, the Utah Jazz could easily use, like how they used a Kelly Olenek. Um, and Danny Ainge. Danny Ainge is the GM over there, and he loved Grant Williams. He's the reason why they picked Grant Williams. So I would not be shocked to see uh, Utah Jazz may try and splurge some money on getting a Danny Ainge uh, picked player back then on Grant Williams. And I think he would fit very well if the Utah Jazz are trying to compete. Now, if they're not trying to compete, maybe they save the money, save the money, try and go for another team or another player. Whatever it might be, we'll see. Um, But yeah, I really like uh, Utah Jazz's uh, fit with a Grant Williams. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Very fun video. Um, Tomorrow there will be the East teams uh, for this video. Um, Very much interested in what you guys think about these free agents. I know some of them are kind of lackluster, not going to lie. But others are, I think, fit pretty well. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.